Okay, three, two, one. Oh my goodness. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is for you. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Zach Schaumler. This is Strong Opinion Sports, episode 435. Welcome in. Um, I want to start today by actually giving everyone an apology. And I, that's my hook. So, hey, you know that's coming. I do want to let you know first, I'm going to say a lot of stuff to start this episode that is not sports related. And so, hey, you've been warned. Uh, I will talk about, we're going to do the Noteworthy Nine today. We're going to do Ask Zach. Um, but I, I want to start with an apology and then a, I think, valuable stuff for life and then and talk about some other stuff. And I, I think it's hopefully uh, I, I share some stuff that is valuable and helpful to anybody listening. Number one is this, and I, I, I feel like I owe you guys, the audience, an apology, and, and maybe even myself. Uh, maybe I, I need to apologize even to myself. I don't know. Um, and, and some people will say, "Ah, don't apologize. Like you don't owe us anything." Yes, I do. I, I, I as my own harshest critic, would even say that I have been unprofessional uh, in the last. Uh, football season, maybe it's been it's been a really really hard time for me. I have in the last six months, and I wish I could say it's been two weeks or three weeks even. It's been six months of me really having a hard time, and you know I, I think the big result of that is that I, I've been late on content over and over and over again, and it really kills me to make a podcast about football that happened on Sunday. It's Wednesday night. You will not hear this until Thursday morning. I, I really don't like that. And I, I that needs to stop. And I'm very excited on Friday. I have a huge opportunity to start changing things. And I, and I want to, I really, I badly don't want to feel like crap uh, putting out stuff that is late and, and not timely. And uh, I think, I, I do believe that's unprofessional to, to put out content that's late and, and no longer appealing to the audience. And I, I just want to say I, I truly apologize, and, and thank God for the people who still watch, still listen, and are supporting me on Patreon. I, I really don't know what I would do without you guys, and I, I just want to say thank you very much. And, um, you know, I <sighs> Friday is, is something I'm really looking forward to. Friday we have the college football playoffs, two games, and what that does, give me an opportunity. Hey, I can watch them on Friday. I can record about them Friday night, get that out to you, 6 a.m. Eastern time on Saturday. And that feels like a great time to start turning things around. But I, I feel like I need to turn things around. I feel like I've been doing um, – I haven't been making content I'm that proud of recently, and I don't like that. It feels horrible. Now, the last six months have been oh, – man, it, it's been a really, really crazy time. A lot like, – this year, 2020 in general, I got engaged. I called off an engagement. I moved across the ocean. I sold all my stuff. I, it's been a really hectic. I, I couldn't access film for like five months. It was a really hard, uh, weird year. And I, I just want to say I'm sorry. I, I really, truly, I feel bad that content suffered. I know it has. I, I, I would encourage everybody to read. And, and actually, do not read it. Listen to it. Go download Audible, the app on your phone, buy it for 15 bucks one month, then cancel the subscription, but you get one credit on Audible, and download and get the book, Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey, and you have to listen to it, because holy sh- Nikes, <laughs> I almost cussed, I'm trying, you know, I call myself out for being unprofessional, then I, I almost cussed. Um, by the way, in real life, I cuss all the time. Like I, it's actually hard for me to like kind of censor myself on this show. And I, I've realized recently I need to make a podcast that's just me not talking about sports, but talking about life and telling stories where I'm free to drop F-bombs. I, I really want that. And I, today I was playing catch with a guy, uh, Carson from Tennessee is visiting Hawaii and we went and we played catch at the park and he's like, dude, you drop F-bombs. I'm like, yes, I do. I drop them all the time. Uh, anyway. Listen to Matthew McConaughey's book, Green Lights. In that book, and minor spoilers, but it's fine. I think it's actually going to make you want to read the book more. He tells a story about a time he was in Australia. 
And it was really bad for him. It was like, it was a really rough half of a year of his life. But there was value in that. It really taught him some valuable lessons. And I, I am desperately trying to turn a hard time in my life into a positive thing that is a launch pad off to really good stuff in the future. And, you know, the, the other example of that in my life is that February, 16, uh, February 8, 2016, my younger brother died. And he, you know, YouTube will probably demonetize me, although, here, I'm going to drop an F-bomb. So, fuck it. I don't care. Uh, when I talk about my brother, I want to be free to say whatever I want. My brother committed suicide, and that was horrible, awful. I felt abandoned, really, really horrible. Uh, and, and in many ways, and, and pretty much every way, you could say that's the worst thing that has ever happened to me. However, I tried to use that awful thing and that really rough time in my life and use it for something positive. It was a fork in the road where I could either, you know, things could go really bad for me and I could spiral out of control and... I was drinking really heavily, and I was headed in a bad direction, and then I was like, you know, no, no. I need to take the other fork on the road. It allows me to turn this into a, something positive for myself where I learn lessons, and I grow, and I get better, and I am desperately trying to turn around this time in my life and make it into something where I grow from it and, and become even better. And I, I really – there is no – you know, this is not a job for me. Strong Opinion Sports is not my job. It's my life. It's everything I do. It's I'm either reading a book or doing strong opinion sports. That's all I do. It's my whole life. And I, I put everything into this show. And I, I've done myself a disservice by letting it, I think, take a backseat to other stuff in my life recently. And that's, man, uh, not cool. And I don't like that. And I don't want that anymore. And I am I'm very, very excited about where I'm headed. And I, again, I, I really encourage you, if you have bad stuff happen in your life, I'm so sorry. It's horrible. But you can really take it and because and I've done it in the past and use it for good and use it as a launch pad for good stuff in your life. And I'm hoping that this is the beginning of it, you know, maybe a new beginning for Strong Opinion Sports where the show gets even better and, and, you know, heads off into new heights. January 1st, you can listen to me talk about the college football playoff. I can't wait for that. That's a massive opportunity for me to kind of take hold of that and really turn things around. I want to tell a story. Uh, it has nothing to do with anything, but it, it was a moment I felt really inspired recently. Uh, I got, I was uploading the podcast last night and I got invited to a comedy night and you know, comedy, it, it wasn't very, it, it was, they were trying improv night and it was, it was bad. It wasn't, you know, people were bombing and making fun of themselves for bombing. And after comedy night, they said, we're going to do an open mic. Anybody want to come on stage? And, and I'm sitting there like, you know, Hey, this is a pretty good crowd because people here are paying to watch comedy. They want to laugh. They're, they're, it's not like a lot of open mics are, and I lived in LA, I know, it's like you're at the laundromat or some nonsense, and people are not engaged. They don't want to be there. They don't really care about you talking in the corner trying to tell jokes. They don't, this crowd was different. They're like here paying. They want to laugh. They want someone to entertain them. And I'm like, man, I'm never going to get a better opportunity my entire life to do stand up than this moment. I have nothing prepared, but I talk for a living. I'm going to do my best. And I've always wanted to try stand up. I'll tell you what. I went up on stage, and I did not kill it. But I got some people to laugh, and I had a great time. And, you know, I, I really didn't want to be the guy who was afraid to go on stage. And, man, you know, I've been saying this a lot recently in my personal life to people. And, you know, all, I, you know when, you, when you call up an engagement, you talk to a lot of people, like your friends, your family, people who have advice. And the thing I've been telling everyone, basically, is that life is kind of like a road trip. And if you're driving from... Portland, Oregon to Denver, Colorado. Along the way, you're going to see a lot of really cool stops on the road. Hey, a, a great burger joint. I didn't know burgers and shrimp could be combined, but they can. Let's try that weird food. That sounds good. Um, hey, there's a beautiful view of the mountains. Let's pull off, take a picture. It's really pretty. Hey, there's a swimming hole. Let's go swimming. Screw it. You know, like there are adventures along the way. And for me, life is kind of like a long road trip. And I want to take as many of those stops along the way to take adventures and uh, I, I want you guys to know I'm working really hard to make changes in my life that are going to make this show even better. One of them, um, you know, I, <sighs> so I have had a hard time talking about this, not because I don't have a lot to say. It's because I don't, I, I definitely don't want to hurt anybody. And I also, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing or say too much. Uh, I recently called off my engagement. And let me tell you, when you think you're going to get married, 
and then you decide not to, it's a really, really hard thing to do. Brutal. And not really good for anybody involved. Like, I, you know, it was my decision. I was the one who, who called off the engagement. Um, and it's hard, man. It's, it's really not good. And, and the, the advice I want, I want to share here, because I, I do think this is valuable. And the reason why I want to talk about this, what I was going to say is that I want to talk about this a little bit. Because I know if I say nothing, people's minds are going to start to wander and wonder, like, what happened? And then when people don't get answers... They create their own in their head, and I, I really want you guys to know a little bit about what happened so that you guys can have an answer because nothing horrible happened. Uh, there's nothing dramatic or drastic. No one did anything terrible to each other. Um, in fact, I still have a lot of I, – I would say I still love my, my ex fiance. I, I really deeply care about her. I want good things for her. I think she wants good things for me. In fact, I know she does because we live together. We broke up and then lived together for two weeks, and I dare anybody to find a better situation where you are broken up but still living with your ex – and it goes well because it went well for us. It was, it was like hard and emotional, but it wasn't – no one's mad at each other. We, we, we left on pretty good terms. But I realized that, first of all, I mean, one thing, I felt like I was making a mistake. I felt like I was in over my head, and I had a hard time saying that out loud. But once I said it, it felt really good. And I, I can't say enough to anybody out there. Man, like it, the worst thing you can do, in my opinion, is get married when you're not sure. And I don't mean like cold feet, that happens in edit. I mean like, you're like, hey, I really feel like I'm making a mistake. You got to speak up and share that. And I did, thank God, because it would be unfair to her if I got married to her when I wasn't all in. And it would not be good for me either to be married to someone that I'm not all in, not all in on. And so um, I learned a lot from this breakup. It was painful and hard. The other thing I want to say, everybody will tell you that all you need is to love each other and that's enough. And if you love each other and you work really hard, it can work. And it can, but not very well. Love is not enough, man. Like, I, I think that my ex fiance and I, I, I love her a lot, right? We weren't a great fit. There were lots of ways I think we wanted different things and had different goals and aspirations for life. And, uh, you know, I, I realized, like, hey, we're headed in, we, we want different things. And this isn't, you know, no matter how hard we work on stuff, there's going to be certain things that, you know, and, and I, uh, I just, there's, I hope I said that in a nice way, but like, you know, people out there tell you, hey, just love each other more. <laughs> Fuck those people. That's not, not actually helpful. All right. Um, so I, I'm excited about my life, truly, honestly, looking ahead. Uh, I, I know it was the right thing. I think it's best for her. I think it's best for me. And, and I'm really trying hard to turn this really hard time in my life into something positive. So um, thank you for listening to my TED Talk. I want to check my notes because I had some notes on this stuff. I want to make sure I said everything I really felt like I wanted to say. Uh, but that was me talking for 13 minutes in a row. Uh, and, and that gives me confidence because I really want to start a podcast where it's just me talking about life and not about sports. And if you want to listen to that, um, it will be coming soon. So um, that's something that's been on my heart for a long time. It's it's kind of hard to make content about sports only because I feel like I have so much more to share with the world. So um, let me check my notes. One second. We're almost there. I know there's more. Why don't I see it? Okay. Here we are. Let me check my notes. I'm looking at it. I felt like I was making a mistake. Uh, the hardest part was hurting her. I, you know, I felt like, it, you know, I'm actually doing good. I mean, it's it's painful. I, I do I do miss. I, it's your best friend. You live with them for two years. I think there was not a single day where her and I were apart. It's pretty weird to like not live with her anymore. It's it's not fun. Uh, but I I think the hardest part of calling out the engagement was that I knew I was going to hurt her, someone I care about a lot. Even though it was right for me and I think right for her, painful. Um, and the last thing I want to say, you can love each other, and you may not really be the best fit for each other. And uh. It's not fair to make – it's not fair to someone you love to make a marriage commitment when you're not ready to make it. And, and I hope I can help some people by sharing a little bit about my journey. Listen to Green Lights. It's great. Uh, someday I'm going to live in a van, drive across America, and uh, I already wanted to do that. Then I listened to the book, and I was like, hell yeah, I got to do that. So uh, catch me in – uh, Baton Rouge someday watching a game in Death Valley and then hopefully the next weekend in like Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'm excited for that part of my life. That is coming up. Let's talk about the NFL. Hey, welcome. Football. Yeah, only 15 minutes in. We're finally talking about football. I want to share the noteworthy nine from NFL Week 16. There are nine games I want to talk about. I already talked about Colts, Arizona, 
Bills, Patriots, and Saints, Dolphins. Three great games. Go watch that content if you want. Go listen to it if you want. But here we are. Game number one, the Ravens beat... Uh, sorry, no. <laughs> the Ravens did not win this game. The Bengals beat the Ravens 41-21. to Joe Burrow is going to get the award for the best quarterback performance of NFL Week 16. He was 37 for 46 passing, 525 yards, four touchdowns, zero turnovers, and that's the fourth most passing yards in NFL history. Two of the guys ahead of him had 427. Like, he... He needed, like, one more pass, and it would have broken. And they, by the way, they could have tried to score at the end. They didn't. They took a knee. Um, interesting stuff there. Joe Burrow could have had even more passing yards. He had a great play where he avoided sack on the first drive, threw for a big gain. Joe Burrow was on fire, looked amazing. I, Looking back, honestly, I would say that, and I felt this way at the time, and I still would say it now, Joe Burrow is the best quarterback prospect we've seen in Ages. Did anyone, do you guys remember how Joe Burrow dominated the SEC? Like, we talk about Andrew Luck or Trevor Lawrence as the, the best quarterback prospect in a long time. And maybe Andrew Luck was, maybe, and John Elway certainly was at that time. But I remember when Trevor Lawrence was talked about as the best quarterback prospect in the last 15 years, the last decade. And I'm like, oh, what about Joe Burrow? Joe Burrow had a nearly flawless year dominating the SEC and shredded Alabama. I, Trevor Lawrence is awesome. Joe Burrow had a way better final year of college football than Trevor Lawrence. And, dude, Joe Burrow is awesome. And Joe Burrow was doing something I did not believe was possible. I remember when Joe Burrow was about to get drafted by the Bengals, and I said, hey, Joe Burrow needs to pull an Eli Manning and say, I am not going to Cincinnati. And God bless you. I love Cincinnati. I hate the ownership of the Cincinnati Bengals. And I said, hey, Joe Burrow, love him. Amazing quarterback. I said, Joe Burrow is not going to be able to turn around the Cincinnati Bengals. Booyah! I was so, so wrong. Uh, the Bengals are 9-6. and six. They are currently number one in the AFC North and on a track to make the playoffs in year number two with Joe Burrow. By the way, that Jamar Chase draft pick, I was also like, eh, it's not very good. Wrong again, Zach. You've been wrong about the Bengals for like two years in a row. Joe Burrow's awesome. Jamar Chase was a great draft pick in the first round. Jamar Chase in this game had seven catches for 125 yards. T. Higgins, his other what, what, his partner in crime, it's not even crime, it's just it's a crime against defensive backs because they're getting shredded every single game. T. Higgins had 12 catches for 195 yards and two touchdowns. That is what happens when your quarterback throws that many yards. You have two guys who have an amazing stat line. But my goodness, the Bengals are awesome. Joe Burrow is awesome. And I loved watching the Bengals beat the Ravens and put themselves in first place in the AFC North, which is a massive accomplishment for Joe Burrow in year two. Uh, now, 24 hours before kickoff, we found out, and, and the Ravens found out, that Tyler Huntley, Lamar Jackson's backup, he's been playing fantastic, could not play in this football game. And so suddenly, Josh Johnson was thrust into the role as the starting quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens in this game. I adore Josh Johnson. I interviewed Josh Johnson once upon a time, a long time ago, during the XFL. And I'm telling you, uh, P.J. Walker was the MVP, most valuable player of the XFL. He had numbers and put up a lot of production and stats and yards and touchdowns. But I watched the film. And I, I, I am telling you, not a single human being watched more XFL football than me. Go watch my coverage. Go watch what I said about it. I was, I was dialed into the XFL. Josh Johnson, the Wildcat, the LA Wildcats quarterback, was the best quarterback in the XFL by a lot. He's a pro's pro. He is a veteran. He is easy to love. I love watching this guy do very, very well. Josh Johnson was 28 for 40 passing, 304 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. On a day where 24 hours before the game is when he found out he was going to be the starting quarterback. On a team he wasn't on, like, a, I remember, he was on the Jets earlier this year. I, you got to love that story about Josh Johnson. He went above and beyond the expectations of him, and uh, they lost the game, but uh, my goodness, he was fantastic. And uh, I, I really enjoyed watching the Bengals beat the Ravens. But the story there to me, hey, Joe Burrow's amazing. Josh Johnson is awesome and deserves some respect and some credit. He's, a guy, he's in like his 14th. He's, a, he's been in the NFL for a long time. And I, I just don't think Josh Johnson – that's a guy I'd love to interview. When it's all said and done – when his career ends, I don't know when it's going to happen. I'm going 
I'm going to track him down and say, dude, I want to interview you because you had an incredible career. You never got the shine you deserved. And uh, Josh Johnson is a pro's pro in the NFL at the quarterback position. Game number two, the Titans beat the 49ers a full week ago on Thursday night football. I apologize. We did a whole segment about me talking about why it's been a weird long time. Uh, the Titans beat the 49ers 20 to 17 on Thursday night football during NFL week 16. It's a massive win for Tennessee. They have launched themselves very, very comfortably in first in the AFC South. And I, I was rooting for them to lose. I'm not going to lie. Cause I want the Colts to make the playoffs. And I was like, man, how cool would it be if the Colts and Titans were tied in that division and the Colts won, but so did Tennessee. And uh, it's awesome. Now, Jimmy Garoppolo is injured. Uh, he tore his, uh, he's got a UCL tear and a fracture in his right thumb on his throwing hand. So Jimmy Garoppolo, I would imagine, is not going to be throwing a football very much anytime soon, which means that we get to see the number three overall pick, Trey Lance, enter the fold and hope, hopefully do well. Oh my goodness. I don't think he's ready, but uh, <laughs> Jimmy G is bad too. Jimmy Garoppolo had two bad interceptions. Uh, he had a, He got picked off in the end zone. And then he had an interception where he threw a terrible ball that got picked off. This game was close and fun. And I, I think at this point, this game confirmed to me that Jimmy Garoppolo is... And, and this game confirmed what I've known for a while, which is Jimmy Garoppolo is holding back this 49ers football team. Nothing against him. Uh, you know, Not that it matters. He's a handsome man. I, he's a, seems like a nice human being. Uh, he's not producing at a high enough level for his football team. There's a reason why the 49ers drafted Trey Lance number three overall. Uh, before we move on from this game, Debo Samuel deserves some shine. The He's a 49ers receiver, technically. He's just an athlete. He can run the ball. He can catch the ball. He's got nine catches for 159 yards in this game. On the year, Debo Samuel has 301 yards rushing. That's running the football. And then 1,247 yards catching, receiving yards. So Debo Samuel can do it all. He's awesome. And uh, I... I He's the beginning, I think, of a trend of guys who are going to be used very versatilely in all kinds of different ways, and uh, I really like seeing Debo Samuel do well. Game number three, Kansas City won. The Chiefs beat the Steelers 36-10, to and uh, Patrick Mahomes looked really, really good. He was 23 for 30 passing, 258 yards, three touchdowns, zero turnovers. That's a great game for him. And uh, I remember writing off Kansas City. They are 11-4 and four now. I got that embarrassingly wrong. Now, I, I did remember saying they're going to be hard to beat in the playoffs, I think, something like that. And they are going to make uh, the playoffs very interesting. I, I was foolish to write them off and say they can't win a Super Bowl. Although, at the time, the way they were playing, they weren't going to be able to win a Super Bowl. Their defense is getting better. Patrick Mahomes is no longer playing here. Like, to start the year, Patrick Mahomes was making passes that I just was like, what are you doing, buddy? Like, you're throwing a ball into triple coverage. You're forcing throws. I think he was trying to do too much, may maybe trying to live up to the hype of being the star Patrick Mahomes in commercials all the time and the, the legend of himself. It's hard to live up to maybe when the legend grows bigger than you. But I remember saying at the time, all Patrick Mahomes has to do is, like, Dis be disciplined and execute the offense rather than trying to play hero ball. He's been doing that recently. Kansas City's defense looks really, really good. And uh, yeah, KC, uh, how, 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 like, I don't know if disappointing is the right word, but I, you know, it is. It is. I don't want to see a repeat of Tampa against Kansas City in the Super Bowl again. I really don't want that. But we might get that. Uh, and uh, I, I don't want that. I, I, I don't know. I love Tom Brady. Favorite player of all time. I really do not want Tom Brady in this Super Bowl. I want like the Colts and Colts in Dallas would be wild and fun, right? Like I want new people in the Super Bowl for once. And uh, that'd be great. It'd be great if Kansas City and Tampa both did not make it in. Although I fear that we are headed towards that eventual future. Number four, the Houston Texans beat the LA Chargers 41 to 29. Um, so first of all, the chargers are now eight and seven. I remember when they were eight and five, like two games ago, and I felt good. I was like, Ooh, okay. They're headed to the playoffs. It's going to be awesome. Uh, now that eight and seven, they are second in the AFC West. They are way behind Kansas city. In fact, Kansas city clinched the division 
And currently, the Chargers are number nine in the AFC playoff picture, which means that the best they can do is 10-7. and seven. And a 10-7 and seven record may not be good enough for L.A. to get into the playoffs, which is a... It's an unfortunate reality because they're a great football team. It's had a good year. And for them to fall short would be like a lot of teams aren't going to make the playoffs. And I'm going to go like, well, yeah, like I, I, the Raiders. I don't want the Raiders in the playoffs. The Browns, the, um, you know, God bless them, Philadelphia, right? They're, they're fine, but they're not going to do anything in the playoffs. L.A., if the Chargers don't make the playoffs, that's a really talented football team that could have made noise in the playoffs that didn't. And if they don't make it into the playoffs, this is a game – they're going to look back on it and have to remember that, oh, yeah, we, we lost to Houston. Now, um, Verona did play a big role in this football game, and it's, it's part of why the Chargers lost, no doubt. But it also affected both teams. And, and at this point, like, hey, Justin Herbert was healthy. Like, you, you got you to gotta take care of business and beat the Houston Texans. They didn't. That's a massive deal. Now, Davis Mills, the third-round pick, a rookie quarterback in Houston— he outplayed Justin Herbert in this football game. Davis Mills was 21 for 27, passing 254 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Rex Burke, the running back for Houston, ran 20 times for 149 yards and, 20, and, and two touchdowns. Excuse me. It's a great win for Houston. It gave me hope for the future of Houston. And I got to say, man, Davis Mills had like one bad game so far this year. But he's also the guy who like, I've never seen a rookie quarterback play better against Bill Belichick than Davis Mills did. Davis Mills, I think, might be the quarterback of the future in Houston. And, like, if they trade for – if they trade Deshaun Watson to Miami, for example, they, they, they really authentically might be better off with Davis Mills rather than Tua. And I say that as a massive Tua fan. So Davis Mills – Salute to you, my friend. You've played fantastic, really gained my respect. And David Culley, hey, David Culley is a guy, I didn't even know his name when he got hired by Houston. He has given me hope. Like, Houston is fighting hard. They're competitive. And uh, I thought they were going to be by far the worst team in the NFL. That was just wrong. Houston's doing very well. Good for them. I love to see them beat L.A. L.A., horrible win for them. Houston, great win for you guys. I walked with a lot of hope for the Houston Texans franchise after Sunday. All right. Number five. On Sunday Night Football, Dallas destroyed Washington 56 to 14. It was a it was a shame. I'm not gonna lie. I, I I'm very, very disappointed in Washington. Washington three games ago sat at six and six with five games left, and all five games were divisional matchups. Hey, you gotta beat teams in your division. And you make it into the playoffs. They control their own destiny. And they failed miserably. Washington is now 6-9. and nine. That's awful. I'm not happy about that. And I, you know, Taylor Heineke was bad in this game. Dak was amazing. They got shredded every way possible. Uh, now, Dallas, they're 11-4. and four. That's an amazing record. I, I think I predicted them to go like 6-11, and 11, something shamefully embarrassing. So, Dallas, way better than I thought, clearly. Uh, they won the NFC East, which is a long streak continued that no team appears to be able to win the NFC East in back-to-back years. Who's going to win next year? Probably not the Giants. Oh, ah, screw the Giants. They're their stupid, complacent organization. Um, yeah, Dallas dominated. Taylor Henneke was bad. Dak looked great. I am very, very interested to see what Dallas can do in the playoffs because they, they are a team with a ton of offensive weapons, they're well coached on defense. They, you know, get interceptions and turnovers. Um, Michael Parsons is amazing. They have a great offensive line. I, I really like Dallas has a way. I, they can make some noise. And Dallas is certainly not a Super Bowl favorite, but they are capable of winning a Super Bowl. Like Philadelphia is going to make it into the playoffs, and I pity them because they've got no shot to win a Super Bowl. Dallas is going to make it in, and they really do have a shot. So. Uh, I'm very, very interested in Dallas and how the Cowboys do in the NFL playoffs. Now, on Saturday, the Green Bay Packers beat the Browns 24-22. to Aaron Rodgers was awesome. He's amazing. He is every single week. Uh, the Packers made some great catches. Browns running back Nick Chubb did his thing. He had 17 carries for 126 yards and a touchdown. 
But what stands out about this football game is that Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield had four interceptions, four of them. Uh, in a game, by the way, they lost by two points, and Baker had four interceptions. Interception number one was a force throw deep in a double coverage. Uh, number two is a ball thrown high in third and 19, by the way. Him trying to force a throw into coverage on third and 19 cost Cleveland a field goal opportunity, which potentially could have been the difference in the game. They lost by two. That's a, They could have kicked a field goal there. That's a three-point swing. That could have been them winning the game. So Baker forcing throws, trying to make stuff happen. Uh, number three was another bad decision. His fourth interception was a play, you know, 50 seconds left. They're down by two. He's trying to put a drive together. Browns had the ball. And Green Bay should have got called for pass interference or holding. That receiver was held horribly. That should not have been a pick. That should have been a penalty on the defense. It didn't get called. I don't know why. But whether you count Baker having three interceptions or four, neither can happen, right? Like Baker, let's say that interception doesn't count. And okay, so instead of four interceptions, he has three. That's still terrible. That's not good. And um, Baker's bad throws and Baker's bad decision-making are costing his team victories. And I'm, I'm really interested. I know Baker Mayfield is a fighter. Baker Mayfield's a guy who walked on uh, at two colleges and elevate, went from nothing, basically, to a Heisman Trophy winner and a number one overall pick. And then he won a playoff game in Cleveland. So he's clearly like he's got a fighting spirit. When Baker finds himself on a new team next year, most likely, which I think is what should happen, by the way, I, I'm very, very interested to see how he will bounce back. And now maybe Cleveland doesn't have the gonads to get rid of Baker, but they should. Baker's holding them back. It's been a problem all year, and I like Baker. I want to see him do well, but I want to see him do well somewhere else. And if Matt Ryan were the quarterback in Cleveland, this football team would be a Super Bowl contender. Baker is the problem holding them back, and I'm sorry to say that. I like Baker. I think Baker's awesome. I like his spirit. Um, I don't know what's happening there, but he's playing really bad football, and it's inexcusable, and it's got to end. Game number seven. The Eagles beat the Giants 34-10. to uh, Philly has won three games in a row. Philly is now 8-7. and seven. And by the way, if the playoffs started today, Philly would be in as the number seven seed. I love that. I love that for the quarterback, Jalen Hurts. I love that for head coach Nick Sirianni. I really want them to get in. I remember being so heavily critical the day that Nick Sirianni stuttered around and sweated and said all kinds of embarrassing crap in front of the media during his introductory press conference. And now look where he is. He's winning football games. They're in the playoff picture right now. That's awesome. The next two games for Philly are at Washington, and then they play the Cowboys at home in Philly. Winnable games. And Philly may not be playing the Cowboys starters. Now, imagine if they lost to the Cowboys backups. That'd be terrible. But Dallas has already secured themselves a spot in the playoffs. They've clinched the division. Philly's got an opportunity here. I want to see Philly make it into the playoffs. That would be very, very cool. And what an impressive first year for Nick Sirianni, a coach who got criticized heavily by myself and many, many others when he took the job in Philadelphia. Game number eight. It was a fun game. It was the Jaguars against the Jets. The number one overall pick, Trevor Lawrence, against the number two overall pick, Zach Wilson. And the Jets beat the Jaguars 26-21. to Zach Wilson won the game, but in this head-to-head -head matchup, I remember outlining this game like before the season even started. I'm like, I'm excited to watch Week 16, Zach Wilson versus Trevor Lawrence, and I'm like, who is going to be the better quarterback in this game? I hate to report this to you, but it's true. There is no real clear winner here of who is the better quarterback. Uh, Trevor did a lot more. Trevor threw the ball 39 times for 280 yards, but he also had a turnover, a fumble. And Zach Wilson was efficient-ish. He was 14 for 22, 102 yards, one passing touchdown. He also uh, did run for 91 yards and a touchdown. He had a crazy, awesome, long, sweet touchdown run Zach Wilson did early on. Um, it was kind of a fun, weird game, and it came down to the very end where the Jaguars had the ball, ball fourth and goal, with like a you know less than a minute left, and they couldn't score. They lost the game, and um, I don't know. I think the the overarching message from this football game is that both Zach Wilson and Trevor Lawrence are young quarterbacks that just need to be given time 
to develop. Don't be too quick to judge them and say, he's bad, he's bad. Look, look, neither of them has an optimal situation around them. Uh, Jaguars need a new head coach. The Jets need all kinds of everything, probably other than a head coach. And uh, just don't, don't be too critical of Zach Wilson or Trevor Lawrence. They both just need time and patience. Allow them to develop, and let's talk about where they are at the end of next year. But I will, I will do a film analysis on both and break down what they did right and wrong this year. That will be fun. I'm, I'm very excited for that, and I look forward to doing that this offseason. Okay, final game from NFL Week 16 I want to talk about. Number nine, the Bears beat Seattle 25-24. to First of all, Nick Foles started at quarterback for Chicago. Dude. Great for him. You know why that's good for him? Because it gives him an audition to show what he can do to help him get on another team next year. Uh, I remember watching the highlights of this game before I watched the full game. And there's snow on the ground. And I just assumed that's a game in Chicago. Then I found out, no, 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 no. Uh, this game happened in the Pacific Northwest, where I'm from, in Seattle. There was snow in Seattle. It looked like a game in Chicago. Uh, and, and I want to say about this game. I was 1,000% right about the Seattle Seahawks. I told you so. I, got, I was wrong about you know Dallas. I was wrong about Kansas City. Uh, undoubtedly, there are teams I also was wrong about. But the one team that I got, oh, my goodness. In fact, there's two I remember. I, I got massive hate from Giants fans for saying they were going to be bad. And I got – I don't think I've – ever in my life received more anger and vitriol and hatred from people when I said that Seattle was going to go 6-11 and 11 this year. Hey, right now they're 5-10. and 10. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got it right, bro. I, I like, killed that one. And uh, <laughs> signs have been there for a long time. I feel like I've been gloating about this for weeks. Um, but people, I, I've noticed this. One criticism of my prediction for Seattle's people say, well— you didn't know Russell Wilson was going to get hurt. Here's my response. Hey, uh, Seattle had Russ during this Chicago Bears game. The Bears, who are a 4-10 and 10 football team. And Seattle couldn't win, even with Russell Wilson on their football team. So, I was right about Seattle. They're a terrible football team. Uh, they're <laughs> What did they trade away Russ? What do they have? Because they, they literally have nothing else other than Russell Wilson. And I, I'm very interested to see what happens about with Seattle next. But again, again, I'm going to bask in the glory of this moment. I was right. I was right. I was right. I nailed it. All right. Uh, oh, by the way, I didn't even mention the way this game ended. <laughs> the Bears had an awesome touchdown with like a minute left in the game and then went for two. Instead of tying the game with an extra point, 24-24, they went for two, Got the two-point conversion. They won the game 25-24. And that is how the Bears won that football game, which I, I almost forgot about that. It was amazing. It was awesome. Uh, this game came down to the very end. It was really cool to see. And uh, that's what I live for. That's why I watch football, as I want moments where I don't know who's going to win until the final minute of the game. And that, that, to me, that's the perfect football game. A, a team scoring a touchdown with a minute left and then going for two. Whether they get it or not, you know the game's going to be decided right then and there. And it was. The Bears won. And uh, I really would have been happy either way. Because you know what I love more than I love being right about Seattle? I love games with great endings. And this game had a great ending, which makes me very, very happy. All right. Uh, it is now time for Ask Zach. It's my favorite part of the show. It's where I answer questions from the audience. In case you do not know how it works, you go to patreon.com forward slash Zach Schaumler. You give a dollar a month. You can give more if you want to. Please do. Uh, it literally helps pay my rent. I very much appreciate it. But a dollar a month gives you access to submit questions on Patreon. Now, if you submit a question, I do not guarantee to read it on the show. My only guarantee is I look at every single question with my eyeballs. I pick the top couple and read them on the show Question number one, let me open my notes because I always do this. I always like tee up question number one. I don't even have it ready. Uh, it's my comedy file. I, I wrote a really great comedy set that you guys will probably never hear. That's, I think, going to be hilarious when I do perform it in the future. <laughs> so David writes in first. David says, hi, Zach. Any thoughts on some key changes or moves that you'd like to see the Giants make this offseason? Thank you. 
Uh, literally anything. Can the Giants make any move? Because I, I want to see some kind of change happen. And it appears like the Giants are going to sit on their gigantic, fat, pompous asses and do nothing. Why? The definition of an insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. The, I, I, if they don't fire the GM, Dave Gettleman, I, I will... I'm going to mock them. I actually, you know what? Maybe it's a bit mean spirited, but their fan base can join in with me. If they don't fire their general manager and they do what's reported is that they're going to keep their head coach, Joe judge and their quarterback, Daniel Jones. If they don't make any moves and they just sit and do nothing. Oh, I am going to roast them because what have these guys done? What have they done to deserve to come back next year? That that's a real question. I'm not saying, like, I can't point to, like, the horrible— You know, Urban Meyer deserved to be fired. And it's not even about deserving to be fired, although I think Dave Gettleman made a case for himself with all kinds of bad moves. But what you got to agree is that what have they done— what good have they done to deserve keeping their jobs? It's not even about the negative. It's about, like, what, what value are they bringing? And I can't point to it in, in New York. And I just—I I want the Giants to fire Dave Gettleman— I hope I'm not being mean-spirited about it, but he's bad at his job, and it's time for them to make a change. And uh, what I desperately want the Giants to do is literally anything. Make some kind of move. That's all I'm begging for. Brandon writes in, he says, Hey, Zach, when players, especially quarterbacks, are being rumored to be traded when the offseason comes, you always hear broad guests on what they will be, broad guesses, I think is what he meant, on what they'll be traded for. For example, Matt Ryan was rumored to be worth a first-round pick on one website, while another says a third. What goes into determining a player's worth in a pick besides skill? Hope you had a good holiday, and we all support and love you. Thank you, Brandon. Um, First of all, uh, I'm I'm like trying to decide, do I want to take this shot? I will. I got friends in the NFL. I talk to people. I got friends in college football. I'm I'm pretty well connected in the football world at a, a very like quiet level. I try not to flex that. I don't have guests on my show regularly. I, I but I, ha- I have connections and I talk to people. A lot of the the, the I, I don't want to say garbage you're reading on the internet, but I, I do kind of mean garbage. A lot of the stuff you see on the internet is people literally just throwing out guesses, and it's fine if you want to guess stuff. But at least acknowledge that's a guess, and a lot of people don't acknowledge. When I, when I have a hypothetical, I make a big show of saying, hey, I love hypotheticals. I love pulling stuff out and making up a conspiracy theory. A lot of the stuff you're reading about trade value is conspiracy theory stuff that's kind of packaged as fact when it's not. These aren't insiders. These are people that are, are writing their opinions because they know that they say something crazy – It'll get clicked on, which, hey, I respect the hustle, man. Like, I, you know, we all need clicks. We all need views, and I, I don't want to be too critical, but, you know, Matt, Matt Ryan's he's, he's worth a first-round pick. And here, what goes into that, that determination? And he, here's why it might be mixed, because what Matt Ryan, the value brings to Matt Ryan to one team, Matt Ryan may not bring that same value to another team. Matt Ryan brings a tremendous value to the Cleveland Browns, Denver, who needs a quarterback. What, is, what value does Matt Ryan bring to... The L.A. Chargers, who do not need a cornerback. They would never make that move. So when you determine the value of Matt Ryan, you go, well, how old is he? He's in his 30s. How expensive is he? Very. Uh, but but what am I getting from him? He, I'm getting probably high-level quarterback play for like three or four years. And if you're a team that's close, like Cleveland is, like Denver is, of course he's worth a first-round pick. So, you know, it's all relative. But those are the factors that come in is what am I getting for the player? And how much am I spending on the player? And how long can the player play for me? Those are basically the three main factors. Uh, and, and then also, of course, stuff like leadership and influence and marketability. And that stuff, it matters a little bit, especially leadership is the one that matters the most out of those, in my opinion. Uh, some people appear to make a lot of decisions based on marketing. But uh, you know what's fun uh, about that answer I just gave about uh, writers, you know, kind of spewing garbage? <laughs> It feels so good to be honest. It feels so good to like just say what I really believe because I, I'm losing faith in humanity, you guys. Like I look around and I'm like, you know, sports for me are a thing that I get tremendous entertainment from. 
but they got no value. They got no value. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, uh, you, you see people say all kinds of crazy stuff in the political world. And that's like, that's like really like dangerous and, and fucked up. In the sports world, it annoys me, but it, you're not hurting anybody by pretending you know the value of Matt Ryan. It's like, eh, well, you know, no one's getting hurt, thank God. But, um, I, you know, I, I just, I, I watched a movie called Don't Look Up on Netflix. Honestly, probably don't watch it because if you like to just be happy and ignore the world, uh, you're going to be very depressed. I, I unfortunately, I, 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 I pay attention to, like, the environment and... Yeah, I try not to listen to politics, but I, don't look up on Netflix is a very depressing movie that unfortunately I think really does show a lot of realities about our, our planet, which it's sad to me. It's very sad. I'm, you're going to find me living in a forest somewhere someday off the grid and you'll never find me and uh, the world will burn around me, but I'll have water and food and I'll take care of myself and I'll be growing food in a garden. Like, I'm, I'm not kidding. When I'm, like, 50, that's what I'm going to do. So uh, I, I already – and I need to buy the property in, like, five years because I know I got to get it, secure it, uh, and then, you know. <laughs> what, what am I talking about? I'm so sorry. Justin writes in, says, question, which is probably too spicy for this show, especially, by the way, after what I just said, it's going to be rough to read this, but I'm going to do it anyway. He said, I forgot the exact wording, but you mentioned something like the University of Oregon had an inflated sense of self-worth. My words there, I will take all the heat if you read that. So I, I did read that, that. And Justin said that, not me. I didn't say that Oregon had a inflated sense of self-worth. Oh, that was Justin, not me. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I am from Washington and went to Washington State. I, me too. Well done, Justin. Although I hate Washington State. I would say that <laughs> uh, the, you, the that University of Washington has a much larger and unearned air about them, especially in the Pac-12. They just assume they will win, and their fans assume the same. Any thoughts on UW or any other program thinks better than it performs? Thanks for reading with your eyeballs. Stay safe. USC is pretty arrogant. They're not all that, uh, especially not right now. They're trying to be, and they, they hired Lincoln Riley. It's a great hire. No, I, I think you're totally right. The University of Washington. So I went to Washington State, guys, and Washington State – Hicks, rednecks, people that shoot guns and have boots and jeans and lovely human beings are there, right? But they're in the country. It's a rural town. It's a small town. And I like this. I, I, I would never want to go to the University of Washington. I went to Pullman, Washington, small town, had a great time. Love the people there. Uh, it's, but it's a different crowd. It really is. It uh, tends to be more right-wing and conservative. Now, I don't have a side. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not right or left. I'm just kind of my own weird amalgamation of beliefs and opinions. And um, what I have noticed it from, you know, far away watching, the University of Washington is, is very, very pompous, the way they talk about the university. And they make it about more than just that, you know, they're the Huskies versus the Cougars. They talk about we're the city. And it's very, it's an uncomfortable rivalry because the, the trash that, one side talks University of Washington to the others. You guys are hicks. You guys are small town, whatever. We're better than you. We're a prestigious university. Like it's, it's such an air of arrogance and we are better than you. And I don't think any human being really is better than another human being just because <sighs> – anyone ever been to Seattle? Fucking horrible, dude. Like the cement. There's some, there some like the – now there's nothing good in Seattle in my opinion. Like I, I don't – want to go back i there's some pretty stuff i guess and the ocean is pretty cool but i think outside of seattle is some really good stuff really like if you get out of seattle um you know the the san juan islands are beautiful the olympic national forest is a human treasure it's the best one of the best spots on the planet um seattle itself dude it's a concrete nightmare it's horrible the traffic's awful uh, people are, it's expensive. People are full of themselves. Dude, I, I don't ever understand like the arguments that Washington fans make towards Washington state. And it just comes across as really arrogant rather than like, you know, it's one thing to like, I feel like it crosses a line into, we clearly think we're better than you and look down on you because of your beliefs and where you choose to live rather than like, Hey, we're just a better football team. So, um, it's one of the most, uh, I don't know, Washington fans, not my favorite. So I, that's my response, Justin. 
long answer there. I hope it's not, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying anything I just said, but eh, you know, it's my show. I can say whatever I want. Joey wrote in and said, Happy New Year, Zach. I recently watched an older episode you released earlier in the year where you briefly mentioned sports and gambling. And by the sounds of it, you made it clear you're not a fan of it. I was hoping you could expand further on the subject as when I heard you say that it was truly a breath of fresh air as nowadays you can't tune into a live sports broadcast or even a sports talk show without being inundated with gambling odds and advertisements. Joey, thank you. Um, you guys, I, uh, I, I need to well, – let me say this. and I'm about to make an announcement I, I'm pretty sure on uh, about my Patreon, which is that I – instead of – pursuing sponsors i'm going to really heavily lean more to patreon and i want to make film analysis content if you want to help the show support me on patreon because if we get to 2,000 supporters on patreon i'm going to make two film analysis videos a month and that's what I'm, all i'm going to promise but i think i can do even more but I, instead i was talking to sponsors and trying to get sponsors and I had a horrible experience and i didn't like any of it and i realized like i would rather work with you guys the audience than work with the big sponsors who have very unrealistic unreal, expectations and things they want from me. And a lot of the sponsors reach out to me are gambling sponsorships. And I, I, I will never take a gambling sponsorship. I don't want to do that. I think it's wrong. It's unethical. Um, I see really big sports podcasts taking lots of money from gambling websites and apps and stuff and i think that's horrible and i don't like it and not that you can gamble it's your life do whatever you want but i don't want to encourage gambling i have known people in my life who've lost everything because of gambling <laughs> i don't fuck around with money dude like money's not a game money's not something you just you know, run around with willy nilly. I, I I really don't ever want to support gambling or promote gambling. If you want to gamble, dude, I, it's your life. Like, do whatever you want. But I'm not going to play a part in encouraging people to spend their hard earned money and, and treat it like a game and potentially lose it all. I just don't. I'm I'm not interested in it at all. I really don't feel comfortable talking about promoting gambling, dude. Do whatever you. I, you know, I uh, I do some stuff that I think people, you know. I, I love a good edible. I really do. I don't smoke, um, but if I, I do about once a month, I'm really tired. I need to relax. I need to de-stress. Take an edible. It's great. That's my dirty laundry. That's the thing I do. That's probably looked down upon from a lot of people. The thing I don't want to help participate in is, is gambling. I just I, I don't know how it's good. I don't understand it. Um, I, I don't have any disposable income really to like spend on gambling. That's another thing I don't. And I, I certainly don't want to encourage anyone um, to do it. So if you want to, hey. I don't really care what you do. Do whatever the fuck you want. I'm, you're, you're happy. I'm happy. I want you to live your best life. But I, I will never take money to encourage people to gamble. It's very uncomfortable to me. I don't like doing it. And it's it's just to me, it's a core belief that I, I never want to and a value that I, I just never want to go back on. I think once you cross that line, you can't uncross it. And it's it's one of the hardest things I've done because I've turned down thousands of dollars, like a lot of money, dude. Because I don't want gambling sponsorships, and they keep coming. And they, you know, they, they email me all the time, like, "Hey Zach, we're you know, trying to bang on the door, like trying to knock it down." I'm like, "I don't, I don't, I'm not going to answer." I, I have to turn them down over and over again. The, the offers get bigger and bigger, and my bills get harder to pay. And I'm like, "Well, I still just, I don't want to cross that line." And I know I could, and I, I feel better. I sleep better at night knowing that I don't. All right, Joey, thanks for writing in. I appreciate that. Hope that was a good answer. Um, that's all genuinely how I feel. Okay. After Joey, we have Carter. Carter says, people wanted to crown Patrick Mahomes the GOAT after three years, yet after a rough start, the media did a complete 180. But you were the lone voice pointing out that playing the Chiefs in the playoffs would be terrible for anyone. So now that they're a playoff lock, would you add them back to the Super Bowl contender list? So I'm not going to add them to my contender list, even though, so let me, let me be, uh, I have to be honest. First of all, yeah. The Chiefs are a team that can win a Super Bowl, and it would be disingenuous of me to um, not acknowledge that. So they are a Super Bowl contender, for sure. They can win a Super Bowl. They're a dangerous football team. Although I made a list like a month ago where I had five teams that could win a Super Bowl. Patriots, Packers, Tampa, Arizona, and the Rams. I said one of those five teams is going to win the Super Bowl. And I don't want to like lie to you guys and say, I did say that. And I'm going to stick with saying that because I 
it, I remember saying in that video, it'll be fun to look ahead. And if Kansas City wins a Super Bowl and my five teams were not one of the ones that won a Super Bowl, I'm going to say, hey, I got that wrong and really lean into that. But yeah, as of this moment now, do you, do I feel good about Arizona? Hell no. I feel way better about Kansas City's chances to win a Super Bowl. Same with Indy. Uh, so that list of five teams I picked is probably going to be wrong. But um, so, yeah, Kansas City for sure is a team in the Super Bowl. I try to be careful whenever I, I talked about Kansas City because I said, look, they're going to be a hard team to beat in the playoffs. I, I did write them off to some degree, but I, I said, look, Patrick Mahomes is playing hero ball. And the minute he can get disciplined again and just execute the offense rather than forcing throws into coverage, they're going to win football games. The defense is getting better. Patrick Mahomes is playing fantastic and, and finally not playing hero ball anymore. And uh, undoubtedly, Kansas City can win a Super Bowl Although I'm going to pretend to live in that universe where I'm going to stick with those five teams, but that's just because I feel like I, I made a call out. I'm going to stick with that prediction. But um, what do I really believe? What I, my integrity of following through with a commitment is different than my belief, which my belief is that the five teams that can win, you know, the teams that can win a Super Bowl now, Indy, Kansas City, I still think the Patriots should be in that mix. The Packers, Tampa, and LA, and I think Dallas, right? Arizona, I, I don't see them winning Super Bowl right now, but um, look, we'll see. I made a call out. I'm going to circle back to it as the year goes on and make fun of myself if I'm wrong later. Ben writes in, he said, Hey, Zach, non football post. I saw on your Instagram that you were listening to the audiobook of Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. If you like his book, you should listen to his Oscar speech. The man is beyond wise. I listened to his YouTube, he left a YouTube link to the Oscar speech when he won an Oscar speech for Dallas Buyers Club. Once you've watched it, my question for you is, what or who is something you look up to? What is something you look forward to, and what do you chase after? This has helped shape my life in a positive way, and it would be a shame if I did not share this. Hope you enjoy it and keep making great content. There's a couple things that I, you know, I strive to live up to. So... I, you know, morally, and when it comes to like doing the right thing, I think of my younger brother, Zane, who uh, committed suicide February 8, 2016. Zane was, you know, my brother was the best guy I know. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that, like people who met him, when my brother died, he had a memorial and 800 people showed up. <laughs> like, he was a big deal. He was like the best. And everyone could say like, no one saw it coming. He was the nicest, best guy I knew compassionate, cared about animals. Like I, I, I watched this guy one time help a duck who was trapped in a, like, what do you call it when it's, it's a water drainage grate. Like he helped the duck get its foot out of there. Like my brother and the duck was biting him by the way. The duck was unhappy. The duck was mad at Zane, but Zane just wanted to help the duck and he had compassion. And when it comes to making decisions on right and wrong, like moral decisions, I often think to myself, what would Zane do? And, and what would Zane, what, what action can I take here that Zane would be proud of? And uh, that, you know, so when it comes to that, as far as like moral decisions, I think of my brother. As far as work ethic, man, nobody I think has higher expectations for myself than myself. And I, I have an idea of who I want to be. And, and I'm never... You know, I've, I've, man, I've chased a lot of dreams in my life and I've achieved a lot of them. Um, but I'm still not where I want to be in life. And, and one of those things, one of those moments of, you know, being the man I want to be was getting on stage, you know, last night doing stand up comedy. That was scary and fun, but I did it, right? The guy I want to be is the guy who it, it makes content on time, who aggressively pursues it and makes great content with great analogies and that I'm proud of and that is, you know, abundant and timely and you know quality and finding that right and I don't I don't know how to live up to what I want to be but that's the thing I really strive for is the 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 person I want to be in my head that it maybe is slightly unachievable you know it's unattainable but if I'm always chasing the person I want to be I'm always going to get a little farther ahead and I it's a fun challenge to compete with a person that you you see that you could become right your potential I'm about to need to drink some water, I think. 
Tom Brady's career in the NFL has been all about maximizing his potential, realizing his potential, right? Like seeing what he's capable of and then getting every little ounce out of that. I don't know if I can do that, but I'm going to try. And uh, that's what keeps me going, man. It's that that competitive, like I'm going to compete against who I know I could be, right? Like the expectations I have for myself are lofty and I'm, I, I'm probably never going to reach them. And I have a healthy, you know, I, I love to read books and I, you know, I don't want to do stuff out of guilt, but I, I always know I can be better and uh, that's okay, right? Like, I, And I want to be better and I'm always trying to get a little bit better in every aspect of life all the time. Thank you for that question, Ben. Last two questions. Evan says, hey, Zach, I know that you consider yourself somewhat of a Panthers fan and have also talked about how you like Matt Rule. But I'm curious as to whether your opinions have shifted over the season. Rule has not done much to help the Panthers, yet it appears as if his job may be safe. I'm curious about your opinion on the situation and also wonder if you are a Rule fan or a Panthers fan. Currently, it does not look like having Rule as head coach for the Panthers will lead to long-term success. If so, if that so that is why I phrased my question that way. Thank you. I'm not a Panthers fan, but I, I, I really, really love the people in Carolina. And, and I have friends in that organization that I believe in, that I like. Matt Rule is a, a person I really, really want to succeed. He's awesome. Like, a, he... It, it, it feels like a motivational speaker when I listen to a guy talk. He's full of passion. He's full of compassion. He cares. He's a good dude. Uh, I think people are lucky to play for him. I actually, my my former high school teammate is their long snapper. I'm not even kidding. Look up Thomas Fletcher, played at Alabama, spent a year, my senior year, his sophomore year at Skyview High School. Thomas is lucky to have Matt Rule as a human being as his coach. Now, will Matt Rule work as a head coach in Carolina? Can he win? I don't know. And I know that's bad when I, the person who loves him and wants him to succeed probably most, uh, you know, of all the people I know, I, I really want it to work. I, I really, really want Matt Rule to succeed in Carolina. And I'm yeah, I'm even like, I, I, I really don't know. And I, I have serious doubts. And if a person like me who is emotionally invested in that guy doing well is it, even like, yeah, you know, I'm, I don't know, that's a problem. I hope he gets another year. I think you can compare him to Joe Judge. Like, what has he done to deserve to stay? I, I don't really know. He said a lot of good stuff at press conferences, so maybe that's he's a good salesman. He, he won in college, um, and maybe he's just learning the NFL. I don't, I don't know. I, I really want Matt Rule to do well. I don't know that he's the right guy, but I, I'm a pseudo Carolina Panthers fan because I, I really like the people there, and one of those people is Matt Rule. I like the owner. I, I wanted Sam Darnold to work. That did badly. I wanted Joe Brady to work. That he got fired. Uh, Matt Rule might get fired. I, I don't know. I hope he stays another year, and I – man, I'm rooting for that guy. I, he seems like a good dude, and uh, I could root for him and also not believe in him. And I don't know what I believe when it comes to him, but I certainly don't feel good. Final question of the day comes from ENK. Hey, Zach, do you think the Texans will be sticking with Davis Mills? Aside from one bad game, he's actually played pretty well. Do you think he'll be a Texan starter next year? Also, would you bring him back as a starter if you were the Texans? I would. I would bring him back. I think he's done a, a very, very good job. Davis Mills has been impressive and getting more impressive as the year goes on. He shredded Bill Belichick. If I, let me look that up because that's my impression. Is I remember him. I, I remember thinking, like, that's the best game I've ever seen a rookie quarterback play against Davis Mills. Davis Mills game log. Am I, I remember watching that game live, and I, I don't want to – I would hate to, like, say that that was his good game, and I'm just totally wrong. Um yeah, so Davis Mills against the Patriots. They lost 25-27. He was 21 for 29, passing 312 yards, three touchdowns, no turnovers. Are you kidding me? That's a rookie quarterback against... Listen to this again. This is what Davis Mills, a rookie quarterback, did against the Bill Belichick Patriots defense. 21 for 29, passing 312 yards, three touchdowns, Zero turnovers, they lost by three points. Dude, Davis Mills is the franchise quarterback in Houston. Get rid of Deshaun Watson. Get a ton of draft picks for him. Build the team around Davis Mills. It's a great formula, uh, and it's beautiful. You can trade away Deshaun Watson, get a massive haul, rebuild your football team. You got a good young quarterback who I like and is doing very good stuff. So, yeah, Davis Mills is the franchise quarterback there, and uh, I, I feel 
I feel good about that actually. Like, that's I, I even feel good about David Culley, their head coach. He's he's done way better than I thought he would. So I have a lot of hope for Houston, and uh, I'm excited for what they're doing. I, I don't know. Hey, I don't. I don't. I don't know where Deshaun Watson's gonna go. I don't know who wants him. I don't know where he's gonna get traded. Hopefully, for Houston's sake, he uh, they get a lot of draft picks for him because if they can get like three, four first round picks, you know, and a, a bunch of good young players to build around Davis Mills, that's a lot of potential in Houston. Guys, my name is Zach Schaumler. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I appreciate you. Remember. Uh, we're all flawed humans. We all make mistakes. We're all doing our very best. That's okay. If you're struggling, go get help. And uh, <laughs> man, I, I know if you're having a hard time, you can get through it and you can use that for something positive. I love you. I appreciate you. But um, bum, bam, we are done.